Hello folks, welcome back to Spencer's Bookshelf. I'm glad you could join me again today. Uh, today we're going to be reviewing the book Walkable City by Jeff Speck. Uh, it's a, uh, another non-fiction. It's not a fiction like the last one that I uh, did, Red, White, and Royal Blue, but it's, uh, it's a great book. Uh, it's a book about urban planning. It's a book uh, that really goes into detail about what makes cities thrive, what makes cities great, and it shows from many multiple points of view why living in an urban environment is better than living in a suburban environment through different metrics such as uh, environmental, such as quality of health and quality of uh, quality of life and happiness. So um, before I begin, uh, again, thank you for joining. I hope you're uh, keeping well and uh, let's begin. Uh, so yeah, I uh, read the book um, Walkable City by Jeff Speck. Um, it's it's a great book. It's it's pretty pretty um, dense. I would say it's a uh, if you want to really dive into a uh, urban planning, and I, I think that and I'll back up actually a little bit. So urban planning is essential. It's really important, and it's something that. As a person, I work in finance, um, and I know most, I don't actually know too many uh, urban planners, but I would say that if you're not an urban planner, you should learn a bit about it because you should really get to know your surroundings and why certain things are the way they are and why, um, why sidewalks are set up in a certain way and why roads are in a certain way and why certain neighborhoods are built out in a certain way. Because I think part of living is really being one with your surroundings. And when you have a conscious knowledge, because I think a lot of people don't consciously like even care about their surroundings uh, in a city, uh, they'll walk downtown and be like, oh, that's there, that's there. But they don't actually go around and be like, okay, um, what's a way to make this area better or what, why is this in this way? And, and, and when you actually consciously think about it, I think you become more and you become more aware of the city. You become then more, you become more of a promoter of the city. You become more happy to be in the place you're in and you actually then care about it a lot more. And I think that that's very, very important. So this book really dives into urban planning. So it dives into... I mean, the idea that, just like the name of the book says, you want a walkable city. So what does that mean? It means reducing congestion, reducing highways, and creating an environment in a city where people are more likely to take uh, transit, more likely to take bikes, more likely to, um, to be able to... Um, to be able to live in a way in which they can interact with other people. Uh, so that means being able to live in a, in a space that allows you to be able to, after work, meet other people and congregate. Because one thing the author talks about initially in the book, or early on in the book, is millennials, like the younger generation coming up, we are generally less likely to be in that tip or the quote-unquote two uh, married couple plus two kids and things like that. Most of us nowadays, including myself, live with roommates. Even if we have the means to buy a house, things like that, it's not about the money. It's about having people around. We're social beings, uh, and that creates happiness. And, and we, we, a lot of people don't want that traditional house in the suburbs with the white picket fence and the 3,200 square feet, four bedroom, blah, blah, blah. No, we want like an apartment or a condo or something like that. And because of that, urbanized, urban planning and uh, the nature of cities have changed. And, um, and frankly, for the better. Um, some of them have changed quicker than others. The, the author I think it's a love affair with uh, Portland, Oregon. Um, actually, I want to see a Portland, Oregon just based on this book because it seems like a really cool city. But basically, Portland's been ahead of the game uh, compared to, and, and it's an American author, so a lot of the um, 
cities that he references are American. But he does go into detail about um, how the U.S. or how Portland is able to, um, after building a pretty strong bike system, they were able to take within just a few years uh, 7% of cars off the roads because people were biking to work, which means that, I mean, traffic got less congested, but also CO2 and just basic pollution goes down. And also health metrics go up because people are biking to work. Like that's, that then causes a lot of positive health effects that take people out of hospitals because if you're biking to work, you're less likely to have, less likely to have heart disease and other ailments that are relating to sitting down and not uh, being active. Um, it also talks quite a bit about mixed use neighborhoods and how um, basically um, mixed use is the way to go. Like you want a, you want a neighborhood that has some businesses, you want and, and residential all put together because not just because it's economical and it's, it's, it's uh, makes sense from that point of view, but also from a happiness point of view, it means that everyone's there together. Um, when, when a city becomes a big family, which is sort of what that type of city would be trying to do, then the happiness index goes up and, and it's just better. Um, I mean, there's one quote from the mayor of uh, Bogota uh, that pretty much sums up a lot of what the book is saying. And it's, it's and Bogota is in obviously the capital of Colombia. He says, you have to walk to be happy and healthy. So if you're looking for happiness and you're looking for healthiness, you need to have a city that makes that happen. And that's what this book talks about. There's a lot of information. I kind of spewed out a, a bit of it. Uh, I'm not going to go into too much more detail about the information because uh, this is another book that you should read. Uh, it's really good. Uh, it, it, it gives a lot of, uh, it provides a lot of details on what makes a great city, um, what needs to be done to fix cities and bring it into the 21st century and get cars off the road. Um, and, uh, and also to get people to live in urban areas, not in suburban areas. Um, so on information, uh, so this is a nonfiction book, so I'm going to rank it based more on the nonfiction side. So information, uh, th things like that. I, I would give it a, a five out of five. Um, some people may say that this book was a little too dense. If you're not in urban planning, there's maybe too much information. And it's hard to, unless you're studying urban planning, might be too much. But the reason why I give it a five out of five still, and I think it's exceptional, is because if you really dig deep on all the information, it's all good. It's, it's all relevant to today's day, uh, day and age. And, and, and we need to be like learning this stuff. Um, we need to be having, we need to be conscious of what makes a city better. What makes us what makes a population healthier and things like that because if we don't cities will never change and and as humans the only thing that's that makes us move ahead in, in humanity is change and being able to adapt and to be able to reflect on the situation and adjust and that's what needs to happen with cities if we don't build cities and and formulate cities in a proper way, uh, we're gonna have a society that's that's stagnant. Um, so yeah, uh, that's why I give it a five out of five on the information. Uh, writing style, I'd give it about three and a half out of five. It's not, um, it's a little wordy. It goes on a little bit of tangents from time to time. The tangents are always, and I shouldn't, I shouldn't talk, I go on tangents like crazy, especially uh, when I'm behind the camera. Uh, but I would say that he goes on quite a few tangents. They're all relatable. They all relate to what he's talking about, but some of them are maybe a little unnecessary, which is happens. Uh, but I still strongly recommend reading this book, uh, not only because of that, but because it's very important. I, I think uh, as someone who went into reading this book not really knowing um, if I would... Um, 
if I would like it or if I wanted to read something that was about urban planning because it's not really my thing. Uh, at, by the end of it, I was like, holy cow, there's so much I didn't know or just didn't care about that I should care about. And frankly, uh, it was a good book. So yeah, uh, thanks for tuning in today. Uh, I'll be uh, putting out some more episodes um, and uh, hope you stay safe and have a, have a great day and keep reading.